This past July, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of what was hailed as one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, as astronaut Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. Like many other historic moments, many of us who were alive at the time can probably remember where we were at that exact moment. I know I was in second grade and I still can remember watching those grainy images from space on our black and white television set. But did you also know that date, July 20th, 1969, was the first time the Sacrament of Holy Communion was celebrated in outer space. Hear these words from Buzz Aldrin as he accounts his most memorable communion. He wrote, I opened the little plastic packages which contained the bread and the wine. I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given me. In the one-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine slowly curled and gracefully came up the side of the cup. Then I read the scripture, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me will bring forth much fruit. I ate the tiny host and swallowed the wine. I gave thanks for the intelligence and the spirit that brought two young pilots to the sea of tranquility. It was interesting for me to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the very first food eaten there were the communion elements. And of course, it's inter interesting to think that some of the first words spoken on the moon were the words of Jesus Christ, who made the earth and the moon, and who, in the immortal words of Dante, is himself the love that moves the sun and other stars. Earlier that same day here on earth, when Aldrin's pastor brought out the communion for church, a portion of the loaf had already been broken away. And he told the congregation that Aldrin had taken it with him to the moon and would symbolically join in celebrating communion with his church here on earth that afternoon in space. Talk about worldwide communion. Aldrin's is probably the most memorable community experience anyone could ever have or hope to have. So it made me think of what other memorable communion experiences I've heard about or even had in my own life. And my own most memorable communion meal took place on the beach. One Sunday, my pastor, who it's worth noting was fresh out of seminary, decided to take the youth group to the beach for a sunrise communion service, after which we would have breakfast and then play some volleyball. So we all got up early, met at the church, and drove our way to the shore, arriving just before the sun began to rise. We followed our young pastor onto the beach, spread out our blankets as close to the water as we possibly could get. And then all the youth sat facing the ocean while our pastor stood in front of us. And after reading some scripture and saying a prayer, he took the bread and he blessed it. And just as he was about to break it, Behind him, running full speed out of the water, came three men who, I'll say, were wearing nothing but their birthday suits. <laughs> when our very young green pastor heard and saw the youth gasping and laughing, he turned around to see what all the commotion was about and quickly turned bright red. 
Just as my father who had gone along as a chaperone said, well, Jesus always said, turn the other cheek. <laughs> now, as much as we would laugh every time, and there were many times that my father would recount that story in the years to come, it actually wasn't his most memorable communion meal. Long, not long before his death, he shared one with me that was. He had just arrived in Korea as a young soldier in the army who had never ever been that far away from home. And my father told me he had never been so terrified in all of his life. It was only his first night in Korea and he had already witnessed so much death and destruction. After supper, an army chaplain drove up and he performed the sacrament of communion on the hood of the Jeep for my dad and a couple other GIs. And then after communion, the chaplain handed out pocket Bibles and encouraged them all to read the 23rd Psalm. My dad said that was the only way he survived that first night. A most memorable communion meal for a scared and lonely GI who felt like he too was a million miles from home. I suspect each one of you sitting here has your own story of coming to the table in a very special way. Maybe it was at your wedding or the first time you ever took communion. Or maybe it was on a special youth mission trip or while at some spiritual retreat. In our gospel lesson, we hear what was most likely the disciples' most memorable communion experience. It happened sometime after Easter morning. And the disciples had made the long trek back to Galilee to come home to the life they had led before Jesus called them to leave everything and everyone to follow him, to embark with him on a mission that would forever change the world. And those disciples left everything, not knowing where the road would take them. Yet they were filled with great anticipation and excitement for their own otherworldly experience. And then on that beach, Jesus appears. Because to them, it had appeared like that mission had all ended in failure. He was dead and buried. And so were all their dreams for a better future. So they decide to go home and quite literally pick up where they left off, fishing for fish rather than fishing for people. And we can imagine that as they once again watched their nets for any sign of a catch, that the disciples were flooded with memories of all the miraculous things they had seen Jesus do, yet wondering to themselves, had it all really mattered? Did they really catch any human fish as he had promised them they would? And then somewhat ironically, they have just now spent a whole nother long night fishing and hauling without one single fish. And then out of nowhere, someone appears who they can't see and he's yelling for them to change their tactics. And when they do, they catch so many fish that the boat begins to tip over. It's deja vu. The boats, the weight of the net, the stranger calling to them. John gets it. It's the Lord. Causing Peter, who's always trying to be the first to prove his faith, to jump into the water and head to shore. And when the others finally join him, Jesus says, come. 
come and eat. And it's deja vu again, as memories of all those meals they had shared together come flooding back. But the most memorable being that last supper, when he broke the bread and he shared the cup as a visible sign of his promise that he would never leave them nor forsake them. And now here he stands, the risen Lord really present, offering them exactly what they need to satisfy their hunger, not just the hunger inside their stomachs, but the hunger within their despairing souls. This memorable communion meal was to be the first meal of their new life together, where by the power of the Holy Spirit, they would be able to carry on his mission of love and forgiveness that would bring in the reign of the kingdom of God here on earth. It was for those disciples a feast that transformed their despair into hope. It's interesting that most of Jesus' resurrection appearances occurred around a meal. Eating again with Jesus, the disciples not only remembered all he promised, but through those meals, the community of faith was literally remembered. That is, all the parts of the body of Christ were joined back together with our risen Lord as its head. That's what we give visible witness to today as we celebrate this feast on this World Communion Sunday. That as we join with our sisters and brothers in Christ from around the world to eat the bread and drink the cup, that Christ graces us with all the gifts we need to be put back together so that we can be the one community of the resurrection. It's so easy to look at the world around us to wake up yet again to another shooting and to easily begin to feel the despair the disciples felt that morning, wondering if all our attempts at fishing for people are really bearing any fruit. So we come to this table hungry for the bread of life, thirsting for the cup of righteousness. And as we eat and as we drink, the great gift of resurrection hope is poured into us so that all our endings, all our disappointments, all our failures are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in and through us into new beginnings, new possibilities, new opportunities that lead us together into the new life that God desires for us and through us for our world. And that's what makes this meal truly memorable. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you continue to be for us the gifts of grace we need. That as we do what you asked us to do in remembrance of you, that we are literally joined back together to give great witness 
to the hope that is ours through our life in you. So pour that hope into us this morning that we may become bearers of hope in a world so desperate for it. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen.